Hello and welcome to the Interactive and Immersive HQ. My name is Marco and today I will show you how you can create a kind of light painting installation like this one here. Um, it's not just based on a simple feedback system, but we will use the brightest point, uh, turn it into a geometry. So yeah, we can make like a line out of it and um, also add a particle system on top. So here's a little video of me yesterday, how I um, projected it on a wall. Yeah, it's uh, good fun and very easy to set up. So yeah, maybe a little installation idea for your next party or exhibition. Okay, before we start, I give you a, a little overview about the network. So what do we need? Well, we need a um, video or camera input. Yeah. This is just me playing with my smartphone light and we will inside this geometry, we'll use the trace shop to uh, isolate the brightest um, pixels and work on it a little bit, put some filters and stuff so that we get this kind of trail uh, from our uh, lamp or torch. Then we'll also add a particle system. And yeah, add some post effects like glow, bloom, feedback, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's it already. So let's start from scratch. I'm gonna delete everything here. And the first thing we need, either a webcam input or I will use a pre-recorded video of me. Um, so I don't have to <laughs> hold my light here all the time while explaining. But you can also use your your webcam. So then maybe let's add a flip, especially if you use a webcam, so it's uh, mirrored in the correct direction. Drag it into a null, and then already into a geometry comp. So. Inside this geometry, first delete this torus here. We don't need it. And the input, um, plug it into a chroma key. With that, we can isolate the brightest pixels only because well, we only want to uh, create the light trail where our torch is. So I have to increase the value minimum here till only the light point is visible. So actually here I can almost go to one, 0 0.99, and maybe also increase this value soft low a little bit. Yeah, so now you can see we have isolated the brightest pixel. Um, depending on your light environment, you might have to um, go a little bit lower here, but yeah. Just play around with it till you only see the brightest uh, part. Okay. So how can we turn that into uh, a geometry now? Right. We can use the trace up. Let's add a trace. Actually, we don't need the out here. We can delete it. And now you see we get this into sub world but when i middle mouse click on it we see it has between 30 and 50 points but we only need one point so let's add a delete sub and also use an input shop now just put it here and scope it only on the number of points that's all we need okay, inside the delete sub we need to change the entity to points and here under the number we activate use number and operation delete by range okay so now we need to reference these, uh, this value here. 
to the select one first. So make a drop reference and add a minus one behind it. And then reference it on the second select of as well. So this way we get only one point out in the end. Yeah. So it's basically just, uh, keeping the last points as uh, the, the last single point. And yeah, that's what we want. Okay. Next we want to have this back into chop world. So let's use a sub to chop. I can leave everything here, uh, on default and it's a little bit choppy our values. So let's just add a filter chop. Oops. It's the wrong one. Filter. And let's change it, uh, the type to left half, um, Gaussian. Okay. So now we have the exact location of our brightest pixel here as a TX and TY value. We don't need TZ. Uh, so we can just leave it, but because we want to make like a trail, like a light trail, not only one light point, just add a trail here and you can change the window length to uh, anything you want here. I'll just put it to like maybe two seconds for now. But if you want to have a longer trail, of course you can, uh, yeah, adjust this value as well here. And then I'm just going to plug it into a null and bring it back into sub word. So chop to sub. So now you can see we have this, uh, yeah, kind of trail going on here, which is based on the brightest pixel in our video. This also, let's plug it into a null and activate the display and render flag. So, add an out sop. Okay. And go up one level. And like you saw in the video in the beginning, um, there were also particles coming out. So we can just plug that right into the next geometry, go inside and we don't need the out here. Let's plug it into a particle sop. So like you can see now there's particles coming out, uh, from that line, but I want them to be in a random order. Oops, not skin, sort. So let's add a sort sop here and change the point sort to random. And now you can see the points get spawned randomly across this line and not in the correct order anymore. I think that looks a little bit nicer. Okay. Let's also work on the particle soap a little bit to make it a little bit more interesting. So maybe let's add some, some wind. Okay, let's make it this way. So it's flying towards the camera. And let's also add some tu turbulence here, just a little bit, 0 0.1. And let's turn the period down here to 0 0.1. Okay. What else can we maybe change here? Let's maybe increase the drag. The life expect, so I'm going to two life variance. I can also use one. And yeah, I think that should do for now, but feel free to experiment here uh, with all these values. And don't forget to turn on the display and render flag here. Okay. Let's again go up one level. And as you can see, we have now one geometry, only our light path. And one geometry is the particle system based on this light path. Okay, we don't see anything. So let's create a simple render setup. So we need a camera. 
light boss render let's also maybe move the camera a bit closer so like two three on the z axis yeah maybe even a little bit closer all right so let's actually make a copy of this render because i want one render only for the first geometry oops so let's type in geo one so this is only our light path and the second geo two this is only our particles so we can work on them separately all right so let me just add a composite here set it to over and put it all the way on the back here also add an rgb key already so we get the black background and now let's activate it as a background top so yeah we just see what's going on here okay next step we can give the geometry already some material so let's create a pong material for geometry one and let's create a point sprite uh, material which is yeah especially for particles we can drop it use as a material and to give it some color we can create a ramp top yeah, make it a little bit interesting we make the type circular and instead of black and white i want it to be like blue something like that yeah and let's also animate the face here with apps time dot seconds maybe times 0 0.25 and now you can just drag and drop it onto, onto the materials as a color map yeah so yeah give it some nice color here all right oh we get an error here I made this using texture coordinates, but the sub being used with it does not have any UV attributes. Attribute, attributes can be created with a texture sub. Okay, so we have to go back inside Clear one well, I actually forgot that. And let's just insert a texture sub here. And now we should not get the error anymore. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so let's do some more post effects because well, till now it still kind of looks boring. Okay, so for our light trail, maybe let's first insert a bloom top here to give it some glow. So let's put the pre black level down to zero. Um, so maybe increase the pre gamma yeah to like two and the bloom intensity maybe also just put it to like two maybe let's turn the bloom gamma down to 0 0.5 okay what else can we do let's maybe add the from the palette, um, the radial blur. Yeah, I really like to use that one. So let's plug it in here, back in here. So yeah, this is like blurring the image. And let's adjust the center point here to the center. 
actually, so 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So it kind of gets spread out from the center middle point. And the strength is maybe uh, 0 0.125. And after that, we just add one more blur. To make it a little bit more soft and that's too soft. We just leave the pre shrink to two. All right. I think the line looks already nice, but the particles, they still look kind of boring. So let's work on that. Very easy. Let's, what can we do? Um, let's insert the feedback and so add a composite. Um, back to here, just drag and drop it. I set the operation to over. And so now we have already some feedback. Let's connect this to the original output here. But, well, it doesn't disappear, so we need a level top. Okay. And here on the post uh, page, we can set the opacity down to uh, maybe 0 0.975. And this is a problem that happens very often with the uh, feedback. Um, that it doesn't really disappear completely, like you can see, and you can fix that by setting the uh, uh, pixel format to 32-bit float. Let's maybe also just do it for the other render here, 32-bit float, RGBA, and now you see it's completely disappearing again. Okay, but we can also maybe add a blur here so the particles get uh, yeah, a little bit softer but yeah we can leave it on the standard um, settings here don't have to change anything okay yeah here in the end we just put it all back together and I think it looks pretty cool maybe we can compare it with the Kind of original. So, and you can see it is following the brightest spot, um, leaving a trail behind it, and yeah, also creating particles on top of it. So, a very easy thing to play around with. Like I said, just go inside here and, uh, I don't know, go inside the second trio actually and play around with the parameter, uh, with the particle parameters, uh, maybe the amount of particles, you can increase it here, 250 and see how it looks. Yeah, also looks nice. Um, we'll also play with the forces that it's going not towards the camera, but backwards. Yeah, it also looks nice. Of course, you can play with the brightness here. So, yeah, many options. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, uh, yeah, drop them in the comments. And see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.